welcome to We Can Geek, your new comics preview for May 9th. I'm Mike Ortiz. I'm Chris Brown. So, uh, before we get into the comics, we saw Avengers. Absolutely. I'm, I'm trusting everyone saw the Avengers. I hope so. If you haven't, go see it now. Stop watching the show. Yeah, go seriously. See the Quit your job. Yeah. Just, just take a personal day and go go see the, uh, the movie. Best comic book movie ever. Absolutely. I was completely blown away by it. Yeah. I, I think Marvel has done everything right. Yeah. This is... This w- I was sitting in the theater, and, and uh, this was the first time I actually looked up and went, they really brought a Marvel comic book to life. Seeing the, uh, the characters more. interacting, uh, the, the fact that you know they pretty much had to fight before they could be cool with mm-hmm. each other and, and make friends, uh, it was perfect comic stylings, just, just the way uh, a comic would be. Just amazing to see them all standing there together, even yeah. when the, the alien invasion's coming and they're standing in that circle the way they show it in the trailer. Yeah. Awesome stuff. Best Hulk yet. Mm-hmm. Best Banner yet, yeah. even. I, I thought Mark Ruffalo was freaking fantastic. The action is flawless. If you haven't seen it, uh, make sure to stay through all the way to the end. There's actually two bonus scenes. Yes. Um, and uh, the first one, uh, I won't mention it just as in case uh, you haven't seen it, but it, it it made me pee a little bit. That's 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 the money shot. Yeah, yeah that, one, that one, as I've been telling everybody, gave me nerd wood. But really, this is there's a reason why it is the high, the biggest opening weekend of all time. It's it's an amazing movie. Joss Whedon has done a fantastic job. Uh, yes. Marvel has done done a fantastic job. They've been building to this since uh, 2008, and uh, you know a lot of people wondered if they could pull it off, and you know sure enough they did. Yes, they did. So uh, take some notes there, DC. I think uh, right. the ball's in your court. So someone over at Warner Brothers better yeah. uh, get it together. Yeah, we don't need a repeat of that Green Lantern movie from last year. Let's uh, let's step it up. But yeah, go see Avengers. You probably have seen it because you know it made two hundred million dollars. I think everybody yes. saw it. But go see it again. I've seen it twice. I haven't seen it a second time yet, but I plan on going. Yeah. So what do you got? So my t- uh, my lead off book here this week, and I think this hit in some markets uh, mm-hmm. already last week because one of our viewers dropped the bag uh, was was saying mine the gap was great. He kind of mm-hmm. thought we dropped the ball. Because we didn't mention okay. it last week, but it didn't come out there, yet. There have been some shipping issues with Diamond uh, due yeah. to uh, an accident, so a few things uh, have come out here that aren't necessarily in other parts sure. of the country. A few things have come out this week that uh, that were out last week. Other areas. So, so we've got Mind the Gap number one here. I, I don't know a whole lot about this book, but this is one of those mm. image number ones that was getting a, a bit of hype, yep. a little bit of attention. Um, I think this actually did sell out in a lot of places that did get it last week. Okay, well, we've got copies of comics and more. It looks kind of interesting. Jim McCann, what else has he done? I know that name. Uh, he was an editor at Marvel. He did okay. uh, the Hawkeye series at Marvel. He did the Dapper Men at uh, Arcadia. Okay. Good okay. one. Interesting. So that's uh, that. Then we've got uh, Batman number nine, mm-hmm. uh, continuation of Night of the Owls is part yeah. two of the, the Night of the Owls series in the Batman. Ending of the last one was fantastic. It's uh, Admittedly, I'm an issue behind it. Oh, man. I got to I, I gotta get caught. It's been great, though. Everything, I feel like it's just a... Oh. Uh, all of the Owl stuff where it started even with the first issue has just been phenomenal. And now it's just, the I imagine the stakes are, are getting up and, you know, pretty incredible stuff. I, I think Scott Snyder is just kicking kicking mm-hmm. butt over there. Everything he's doing I think is great. This is DC's best book in my opinion. Oh, absolutely. And, and as I've mentioned before, I'm not even a Batman fan. Yeah, and I either. love it. Love it. Then we've got Fatale number five. I love this book. It's it, This is the sort of stuff that Brubaker should be doing. Yeah. The crime noir sort of stuff, but it, it has what I love about it is it's not just straight crime fiction. Mm. It has some weirdness going on. Yeah. Some you know, there's there's that Cthulhu monster that we've been seeing on the cover of the first issue. Obviously, there's a mystery afoot. It starts with a mystery writer and a murder and a, a an unpublished novel that is probably all true, mm. and and you know incriminates some people and some people are trying to get after it. And there's a woman who seemingly. Uh, you know, is immortal or some kind. She doesn't seem to be aging at any rate. And and Sean Phillips' artwork, I, absolutely beautiful, especially for the genre. Mm-hmm. It works so well in, in the crime fiction yeah. stuff. Then we have Morning Glories, issue 18. This book is finally starting to get a little bit more somewhere. Okay. Um, we're, they're starting to kind of uh, unravel a few things. Um, again, I'm an issue behind. I've, I've the last month was spent trying to get a lot of things in order and in our free comic book day and all that stuff together. And so I'm an issue behind on a, a number of things. But I, I do really like this book. I, I like the idea that it, much and people kept comparing it to Lost, but I think only in its storytelling style in that 
It gives you just enough to make you want more and then pull the rug back out from under you. But in this one, well, much like Lost also, I think the characterizations are good enough that I didn't get annoyed by that. Then I have Invincible 91. This book is a book I'm caught up on. Mm. Love, love this title. Uh, there are some interesting things afoot. You know, Mark is tied into a much, much bigger thing uh, that includes the Viltramites. The Viltramites are, you know, they're, they're not exactly altruistic in, in staying here on Earth. They've said that they're gonna not going to bother us for now. But a lot of things are happening. And the, uh, you know, the, what is it, the, their group of, of planets that are, are essentially trying to stop, stop the Viltramites, they know they're up to no good, but Mark kind of has these grand ideals, and unfortunately right now he's in a coma. So we, we shall see where this is all going to lead and what's going to happen, but I, I just think uh, Robert Kirkman's a, a stellar storyteller yeah. in certain areas. I mean, it's like I said, the things that he just really nails, he nails. And Invincible is one of them. And uh, then I've got Thief of Thieves, number four, which is Another Kirkman and Nick Spencer. So this is, you know, we went right from Morning Glories and Invincible into Thief of Thieves here. Um, I like this book. This is also kind of got like a, just a cool, hip, you know, heist vibe to it. And there's, you know, a cop trying to bring the criminal down, and the criminal's, you know, perhaps re retired and, and trying to, you know, put that behind him. Although, you know, he's maybe misstepping a little bit and trying to get caught. Really, really interesting you stuff. Know, uh, this has been uh, picked up by AMC as a as a possible TV show. Uh, yeah, I heard and, that. Uh, look what that did to the comics for uh, Walking Dead. So, yep. you might want to hop on this now. I know the first issue uh, sold out at, yes. uh, at Diamond, and a couple other issues have sold out. So, uh, even the second printings are going to get uh, more and more scarce as people start picking this up. We've got number ones here, comics and more. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you got? I'm going to start off with Uncanny. Oh, wait, X you know what? I think uh, I, I got tripped up here for a minute. Oh, okay. I'm so used to Walking Dead always yeah. being my top pick every week <laughs> that I, I was just like, oh, I'm at the top of my stack. Walking Dead's not actually my top pick mm. this week. Oh, wow. Um, I'm excited about something else. Wow. But Walking Dead it was really good this week. Uh, this is going to start the part one of Something to Fear. The last issue, they introduced the other camp uh, with Negan, and they're, you know, the, the hilltop, and those people are, are essentially have made a deal with Negan where they... It's a protection racket, and they're giving them half of their supplies. And, you know, Carl, being Carl, well, so why don't you just give, if we, you know, kill that guy, how about you give us half, us half your supplies? Well, we wouldn't even need half, <laughs> but we'll protect you. So uh, it's kind of interesting. There's an interesting moment where there, we, our group is introduced to Negan's group a little bit, and uh, some things are going on. Basically, it's just the first part of... Uh, of what's going to be a you know a longer story leading us into issue 100, and uh, good stuff. Little little slow, nothing huge happened yet, but good stuff, building stuff. Hmm. Now what do you got? Uh, I am going to start off with Uncanny X Force number 25. Uh, you know I've I've been praising this book for uh, over a year now. Uh, it it got a little soft there when uh -huh. uh, when they went off into uh, other world in Captain Britain. Uh, the last issue was uh, was pretty good, but apparently they're jumping back into a nice big storyline here. We've got artwork by Mike McCone and uh, Jerome Opeña. Apparently there's a, a, a Jerome Opeña piece that uh, appeared somewhere else that's showing up here. So, uh, you know, I'm getting a lot of X-Men books these days. Uh, this is uh, not as solid as the other ones, but uh, still yeah. so far been it's been, been pretty good. So if you like your kind of killer X-Men team, uh, at the moment, this still hasn't hit the uh, AVX crossover, but I'm sure it will very, very soon. Uh, next up, Avenging Spider-Man number seven. I don't normally get this book. This is the first issue uh, that I've purchased, and I'm getting it primarily because it's written by Catherine Imminent and drawn by Stuart Imminent. Uh, he is a fantastic artist. I think he's one of the best superhero artists now working. Uh, as far as I know, this is just a one-shot, uh, and I love things like that. It's a Spider-Man She-Hulk team-up. It's a great cover, too. Kind great. of reminds me of 80s comic books. Yeah, great cover. Uh, and, uh, you know, Stuart Eminent is just a fantastic artist. His wife, Catherine, is a great writer. Um, yeah. If this book is going to be like that, where they're going to rotate the creative teams, especially if they're going to have some one-shots, then I'll probably be picking up a few. Because if it's Spider-Man crossing over with a character I like, or it's got a creative sure. team I like, um, and, and they're not all part of a long storyline, uh, I'll give it a shot, just like the old Marvel team-up used to be. Next up is Green Lantern. Uh, we, uh, we are learning the secrets of the Indigo Tribe. 
uh, and their connection to Abin Sur. Uh, the Hal Jordan and Sinestro have been uh, taken captive by the Indigo tribe, who also still has the Black Hand, uh, who yes. they uh, nabbed at the end of Blackest Night. Uh, so we're learning some secrets. We're seeing some uh, some interesting stuff, expanding the mythology uh, a little bit more. The Indigo tribe was was actually one of the more interesting creations to come out yes. of that uh, War of the Light. We never really learned a lot about them. We were learning about them, but Jeff Johns was building. That's yeah. what he does. Yeah, and uh, and so finally, after a couple of years, we're, uh, we're getting the answers that uh, we're waiting for. Next up, Wolverine and the X-Men. This is my favorite X book. Uh, this has really been a lot of fun. It's Wolverine and the school. Uh, basically, this is what the X-Men, you know, began life as. And uh, nobody would have thought Wolverine would ever be taking on the Professor X role. Right. But uh, he's doing a great job of it. And this is the issue where they uh, they start dealing with the uh, the stuff going on in Avengers vs. X-Men. So um, I'm really curious to see how that's going to fit into this because, you know, the whole thing's about hope. And, uh, and, and the and kids. It looks like there's even a split there and, in the uh, mansion from the yeah. last issue of, of AVX. Even uh, even in within the school itself, uh, there yes. are people choosing sides. So I'm really curious how this is going to play out. Wolverine, obviously, at this point, is on the Avengers side. I'm sure he's going to be on the X-Men side by the end. He's an X-Men. Come on. Right. He, he, there's not Wolverine and the Avengers book out there. Come on, people. Um, that's all the Avengers books. Well, anyway... <laughs> Uh, Wolverine and the X-Men uh, by Jason Aaron and uh, Chris Pacello. Next up is Captain America by Ed Brubaker and Patrick Zercher. This is uh, Ed Brubaker's uh, more superhero book, Winter Soldier being kind of the more espionage book. Uh, the previous arc was drawn by Alan Davis, and that was really the main reason I got it. This one's by Patrick Zercher, who's not quite as strong. He's actually drawing a little bit more in the style of the, uh, the more espionage uh, Captain America book that, that Brubaker had launched. Um, this book has, has not been as, as good as it used to be. Um, right. It's kind of been on the chopping block, but you know what? Captain America was so awesome in the Avengers movie, it bought a couple more months for this time, I'll tell you that. <laughs> he, he, uh, he was pretty awesome. Yeah, so uh, Ed Brubaker, uh, you know, doing great stuff still, but, uh, you know, this is not, not, the, not the top of his game. Next up is uh, Max Fury. Uh, not Max Fury, but the Marvel Max uh, Nick Fury series. Uh, this is the second Marvel Max Nick Fury series. There was yes. one several years ago, uh, written by Garth Ennis. And if you know anything about Garth Ennis, you put a Max Comics explicit content tag on the front, you're going to get some crazy stuff, especially when you're dealing with a cranky old spy like Nick Fury. I didn't like um, the first Nick Fury Max series. I, I liked it a lot. I thought it was a lot of fun. It didn't. It wasn't. I don't even think it was set in the Marvel universe. We had a nephew like. with half a face, like Ars face. I just felt like it's, it was rehashed nonsense from Preacher. It's, well, I, but it's in the Marvel Universe, or it's the Marvel version of it. Um, so, yeah, I'm just hoping this is going to be some crazy, over-the-top, uh, insane violence. This actually looks like he's a little bit younger, so maybe this is set in the past. Maybe he's uh, he's recounting his life. Uh, this is this is not the uh, Nick Fury from the movies. This is not Samuel L. Jackson. This is a crankier, older... Uh, Thankfully, it's spy. not David Hasselhoff either. This is true. Although, if this was an aged uh, David Hasselhoff talking about all of the people he's killed in his past, that might actually be kind of fun. Uh, it's got a great cover on it, but you know what? I'm just picking this up because I just want to see Garth Ennis do some killing and some swearing and, and a lot of drinking and things like that. That's fair. So what's on uh, top of your stack? Well, the top of my stack here, uh, kind of a, an unusual one here, but... If you know anything about me, it would be no surprise to you that Frankenstein Alive Alive number one by IDW is uh, is my top pick here. This is written by Steve Niles and drawn by Bernie Wrightson. It has kind of like a black and white with some, you know, a little wow. dash of color in it. Gorgeous stuff. And now, Wrightson did a Frankenstein quite some time ago, right? Yeah, that was an illustrations for the novel. The okay. But to see his Frankenstein come to life, yeah. and I believe this is some kind of continuation from the first film, I think. Mm. I believe that's how he approaches it, like it's a continuation from that stuff. Wow. I, I could look at Bernie Wrightson artwork all day long. Bernie Wrightson drawn Frankenstein is why I'm here. Mm -hmm. You know, I haven't read a lot of stuff by Steve Niles. I know a lot of people really like his horror stuff. I've not read a lot of it. But Bernie Wrightson drawing Frankenstein. Beautiful looking book. I'm really, really excited to read it. That's my top pick. Hmm. Uh, it's interesting. We both got uh, IDW books as the top pick. All right. And we've both got uh, books with uh, with kind of old classic comic book artists sort of returning to form. I've got Trio by John Byrne. 
Uh, this right. is John Byrne doing good old fashioned traditional superheroes All right. uh, who are loosely based on rock, paper, scissors. Oh, so it's, it's John Byrne, it's superheroes, and it, what may be the craziest superhero concept I've ever heard. So uh, with all of that going for it, I had to give it a shot. I love yes. John Byrne. I love crazy super. I mean, rock, paper, scissors. How did no one think of that before? Well, here's what I don't understand. They've got a great opportunity here. IDW has the uh, uh, license to do uh, Star Trek. Where's the paper, rock, scissors, lizard, Spock? It's probably all caught up in <laughs> Paramount Legal at this point. Uh, there'll be a crossover down the road. But uh, but yeah, so we've got uh, we got John Byrne doing superheroes, regular superheroes, not X Men superheroes, nothing right. like that. So uh, so yeah, artists from the seventies and eighties making a comeback. Don't call it a comeback. <laughs> They've been here for years. <laughs> and with that, that is your Week in Geek.